Hey, welcome back. In the last video we gave a quick overview of the Google Sites environment, the new Google Sites environment. In this video we're going to go into a little de more detail about creating pages. Okay, as you see I've gone back to sites.google.com and I see my sites listed. Unfortunately, I failed to name these sites I created and so it's a little difficult, difficult to tell which one is which. So, let me first click on one. And this looks like the more recent one that I created. And I can I can rename it in the upper corner here. It will also appear here if I'd like. And it's going to automatically save. Because it works the same as things, other things in the Google environment. And now you can see that it's going to be a little easier for me to find out um, which site is which. Now, alternately, if I happen to know that I this is test site one, this was going to be test site two, I could rename it here. The only difficulty with renaming it here, of course, is that it's very difficult to see the con. Okay, I'm going to right click, open in a new tab, and start to take a look at some of the functions we can do on these sites. So the first is you have a banner across the top. You can designate this as a title, which is probably appropriate in this case, or a heading, which is smaller, or a subheading, which is even smaller than that. In this particular box, and or normal text, which is even smaller than that. Okay, um, in this case, title would be most appropriate. You can also change the alignment from right to left, to justified, which in this case there's not enough text in there to really justify it in a box, or to center. Okay, if you needed more room, you could stretch out this box, or compress it. And you can also change the location of the box. So if I stretch it in this direction, and then this way, I'm actually moving it over to the left, making the box smaller and moving it to the left. So there is no center option for the box itself. You're not going to be able to do that, but you are going to place it on the page by actually grabbing, sizing, and aligning the box. And as I do this, you'll notice in the background, you see these lines. Uh, those are part of the underlying grid, and you can use those to... And you can work with a variety of different objects in that way. So as we insert things from the right menu, just remember that's the default, is to grab the edges and to align them to the underlining grid. So to change the size and the position in that method, not by using some kind of center button or some other, some other option. Okay, other options here. I can make this into a hyperlink. So simply by clicking on it, you can put the text up here. So, um, we'll just put something silly in there, and something quick down here. And when I apply that, it inserts a link right within there. Okay? So let me, I can come back and edit that link, or I can trash it. And then it will remove the link itself, but not the text. So if I want to take my original text and make that into the link. Here, let me just copy the address. You can see the text appears on the top, the link on the bottom, and now this becomes a link, basically in this case, to itself. Now, when I mouse over this banner region, I will get other options that pop up. Let's go to header type first. Header type would be large banner, and I will just simply make it taller, banner, which is what we started with, or title only, which is removing some of the graphic features and making it smaller. These are um, all good options for different pages. Sometimes that home page will have the larger banner, and some other pages may have little to no banner. 
Okay, the other thing that you can do is you can change the image, and you can do that in two ways. You can select an image, so Google gives you um, some basic images in the gallery. Okay, and if you don't like it, you can click reset here to set it back the way that it was. Or you can upload your own image. And that's not going to be a good image, simply because well, it actually came out it came out better than I thought. You want to give some thought as to the size and shape of the image before you select one. Um, because if the image is too small or too square, it's not going to play all that well in that space. Now, notice that if I do change the header type, okay, I see more of the image. So that was all accounted for when the image was loaded. And that's part of the responsive design, a nice feature. Now, in the lower right-hand corner, Google has automatically made a readability adjustment, so it's kind of faded my picture so that we can see the text on top of it, which is generally a very good idea. But if you remove it, you're going to get the actual picture. Now, in this case, it does make the site harder to read, so I'll simply put that back on there. Okay. And those are the basics of working with the tools. You're going to see the same type of thing over and over again. In subsequent videos, we're going to come through and we're going to look at the different types of things that you can actually put in here in addition to this banner.